Hello everyone, uh, I'm Manolis from Liberspace Foundation and uh, today I will present you the SIDLOC which is a new telecommunication standard that we, we started to, to propose in order to, to get uh, to identify and uh, localize uh, satellites that are orbiting uh, the Earth. So, uh, before I start, are you aware of the TLEs, two-line elements? How many of you? Okay, a lot of people. So TLEs uh, is um, um, two lines, uh, on, uh, two text lines that describe uh, the orbit of, uh, of an orbiting object. Okay, so what is the problem and the motivation before, be, behind the seed log? Uh, those orbital data are, are coming uh, from limited resources, uh, from limited sources. Uh, they are public, but not libre. So th these sources are mostly um, uh, military. So we have one source that is the U.S. military and the France military. Uh, and they, are, they announce them uh, publicly, but of course we uh, have all the restrictions that the mil military has. Um, another very interesting uh, limitation is that they provide public, public data only for um, space objects that are larger than 10 centimeters. And someone may, argue, someone may say, okay, 10 centimeters are enough for satellite. But uh, I know some very annoying people behind there that they build satellites that are smaller than 10 centimeters. Actually, this is a cubic platform that we flown a year ago uh, into space and, uh, with a Firefly mission. Uh, and uh, it was a very, very good use case because uh, the second stage of the Firefly rocket uh, failed to deliver the satellites on the correct orbit. So it, it was 100, 100 kilometers less, if I recall correctly. Uh, so the, the orbit was not... Co the, the, the the, the one that we have prepared uh, for our mission, and it was changing very rapidly because, uh, due, to the, due, to, due to the drug. Okay. Um, and uh, the traditional ways of uh, getting the orbital data uh, rely on radars. This is uh, the Space Surveillance Network of uh, US military that has a uh, few radars uh, across uh, the world. They are quite huge, okay? And um, in order to get a uh, new orbital formation for your satellite, the satellite must pass through the, uh, through the aperture of uh, such a radar, okay? And again, if it is small, it is not a guarantee that you will get your, uh, your, your orbital data for your satellite. So... The idea of SIDLOCK is to put a tiny uh, beacon uh, on a space object, for example, a rocket body, a satellite, uh, or anything that you want to fly, and uh, by transmitting specific uh, signals, you utilize existing ground station networks, like the SATNOGS or whatever you want, uh, do the processing, extract the frequency offset and, uh, due to the Doppler, and then, uh, by, by making uh, cure fitting techniques, you can estimate very, very accurately the, uh, the orbit. And it's, this is something that we have already done with, uh, on Sartnox uh, uh, using the STRF. I don't know if some one of you are available with STRF. Okay. Uh, and um, it, 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 it has proven that it's it can produce a quite accurate uh, orbits. So um, the, the goal of SIDLOG is, is to have a very low power uh, transmitter on board the satellite or a space object uh, to have low cost, let's say, reasonable cost for a space mission and also to be uh, zero maintenance. So you attach this beacon on your satellite and you don't have to do anything else. Um, of course, all of the satellite operators uh, want to, in order to integrate such a solution, wants to be uh, as, uh, is, as easy to integrate as possible. So that's why uh, 
we mi miniaturize a lot the beacon, and it's in this form is, uh, for example, is three times larger than uh, than required. I will talk about, uh, later on why. Um, and um, as I said before, it can take advantage and kind of existing uh, geostationary network. The RF characteristics of the seedlock is uh, we envision to use the UHF band and uh, 401, 2, 402 especially. Um, this, are quite, this is quite a dangerous band, let's say, because uh, the, uh, the uh, meteorological satellites use it. So there was a, um, a, an independent uh, research uh, from ESA if we can, uh, if we can use it. And um, by um, taking into consideration the power spectrum density that uh, we, transmit, we, we, we produce on the such uh, frequency, it seems that we can coexist with uh, meteorological uh, satellites. Uh, the bandwidth that uh, the sitlog uses is uh, at around one megahertz, uh, and uh, it, it transmits a BPSK signal uh, that uh, is uh, generated by the uh, direct uh, sequence spec spectrum uh, uh, system. Uh, we use uh, the gold codes. I don't know if uh, some of you are familiar with them. They have uh, excellent uh, cross correlation uh, properties, and uh, Especially, and uh, more uh, precisely, we, we repeat 10 times its gold sequence. Um, it has to do with the decoding uh, uh, procedure. But that's why the, the repetitions. And the effective rate is only 50 bits per, sec per, per, per second. It's um, a, a frame of seedlock has a duration of about 12 to, four, two to 14 uh, seconds. So... Quite low in uh, data rate, but uh, quite resilient in the low SNR uh, scenarios. Uh, the TX power is very low. It's only 25 uh, dBm. So here I describe a bit uh, the process of, of uh, the TX, of the spreading. Uh, you have um, a chip rate, which is much higher than the data rate. As I said before, this is one megahertz. And you just XOR, you perform the, the, the XOR of uh, the gold sequence with the initial data to, to produce a, 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 a pseudo noise uh, sequence that is uh, quite uh, higher in, uh, in, uh, in bandwidth. So this is. The, the transmission flow graph that we use in order to, to test uh, and uh, do the simulations. Actually, it's quite, it's quite simple. Uh, most of the blocks are uh, the, the, the GNU radio core blocks, and uh, we have created uh, two additional ones, which is the spreading uh, and, uh, and the spreading and the one um, that uh, actually uh, uh, compiles the frame of, uh, of the fit of the seed loop. Very, very simple. On the other side, however, uh, as you may know, everything comes with a cost. Okay, so uh, the, the RX procedure is quite uh, expensive and uh, computationally intensive. Uh, so we have to deal with uh, terms of Doing this in real time or, or not, uh, have enough sensitivity to identify something and then start uh, uh, doing something uh, more, let's say, robust. So th there are three major, um, three major techniques to, to, to decode um, the, <coughs> the, the DSSS uh, signals. The autocorrelation one, which, uh, from, the, from which we can get directly the frequency offset without any issue. But uh, it, is, uh, the, um, it's, it doesn't perform well in no, low SNR environments. Okay? Uh, the other one is the cross-correlation with coherent integration, uh, which is, I think, the, the most sensitive one. But uh, right now, as we stand, uh, as we stand uh, at this point, we cannot do decoding, real, decoding in real time in uh, NI7. So um, this is a very big deal. Uh, and there is also the cross-correlation with non-coherent integration, which is something 
in the middle. So the idea is to use, um, uh, to use autocorrelation only to say, hey, probably a seed lock transmission is, uh, is currently uh, active, and uh, then switch to cross-correlation with non-coherent integration to extract uh, the frame type and uh, whatever it, it is needed to, um, to be extracted in order to get the full, uh, the full frame. And then uh, offline, uh, if the SNR is not enough, switch to cross-correlation with coherent integration in order to get uh, the, the, the whole frame. So SIDLOCK supports three different uh, types of uh, beacons. Uh, the, the, the minimal, which is uh, a super minimal uh, amount, of, uh, amount of information in order to uh, identify which satellite you are currently receiving. Uh, the full, which has uh, also um, location, the location of the satellite, if the satellite supports uh, uh, location estimation through a GPS, let's say, and the, the integrated, which is all, it's uh, similar to the full, but uh, the, the satellite can pass, can piggyback some uh, minor information on the data, on the, on the log frame itself. So if everything uh, goes uh, wrong on the satellite, operators could still have a clue if, uh, for example, the satellite uh, was never um, pinged uh, the, the seed lock uh, beacon, so it, it could be a clue that uh, the, it was a catastrophic failure of the satellite, let's say. Um, these are the full um, uh, beacon fields. Um, uh, most, of them, most of them are, uh, are related to the position. Uh, the most interesting th of them are two. It's the sync word, which is uh, all, uh, all ones, um, and uh, the, the satellite ID, which is a unique identifier for uh, its, uh, its um, space body, its orbiting body, let's say. Um, the, um, the all ones is a bit weird for a preamble, uh, but um, imagine that uh, you using a, sp a spreading you, you, you spread these all once, so you have a, a repeated pseudo noise uh, sequence. And uh, if you if you keep it the same, you can integrate it on uh, on a larger time window. So you could potentially uh, identify easier uh, the existence of SIDLOOK. So the reference. Uh, design of uh, the SIDLOG beacon uh, uses an STM32 uh, L4 series uh, MCU, uh, which handles the main um, control of, uh, of, the holder, uh, of the hardware and uh, the peripherals. Uh, we have the, for, the, um, for the single generation, we use the 8086RF215 uh, IC uh, in IQ mode. So these uh, particular transceivers uh, can, be set, uh, can be configured to operate in IQ. And uh, the, the whole DSP and the IQ generation is done uh, on the ECP5 FPGA that we have on board. So um, all of these components are, uh, uh, are inside uh, this cube. Um, regarding its size, it could be far smaller. Uh, but uh, we got an opportunity to fly with Ariane, Ariane 6, the new rocket uh, from ESA and Ariane. Uh, and uh, actually, they mandate to have a Deep Sub 9 uh, connector. So <laughs> it is huge comparing to the, to the, to the whole stack. And uh, Marthos, do you recall we had the... M5 screws? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they, they, they required uh, M5 screws, which was, yeah, on this, uh, we, we use uh, M2.5. Uh, 2.5? Yes, yes. M3 for models, the Yeah, okay. So the, the, the beacons could, uh, should be larger, of course. 
Um, this is the flight model. This will, this, uh, will actually fly with Ariane. Uh, and uh, it had uh, passed uh, the vibration testing. This is uh, the vibration uh, pod that you, that you shake it in, uh, in order to see if uh, everything holds. Uh, and of course, uh, the TVAC uh, procedure. So we, we did also a deployment of the antenna inside the TVAC in order to, f to see if the, the beacon can uh, deploy its antenna in the cold plateau at minus 20, ar around minus 20. And um, actually, we are quite happy with the SIDLOC because it's... Uh, okay, uh, Libre Space Foundation uh, produces everything uh, uh, in open source and uh, open hardware way. Uh, but uh, our previous comms board had uh, this limitation uh, from Xilinx. So we use a Xilinx FPGA, so we had to rely on Vivado in order to build uh, the, the building. But uh, this time, uh, we uh, selected uh, properly the hardware in order to, to use to, in order to produce uh, everything from uh, open, uh, open tools. So, yeah, we are quite uh, <laughs> proud about it. So the, the, the projects uh, involved is, of course, KiCad for the PCBs, new radio for the uh, ground station um, uh, decoding and uh, simulations, FreeCAD for the mechanical, um, Zephyr Artos plus ECP5 uh, for the... Um, uh, onboard con controller and uh, Litex uh, plus Yosis plus Trellis and uh, NextPNR for the uh, ECP5 uh, bitstream. So that's all for me. Uh, you can find uh, more information on our uh, GitLab uh, repositories. Everything is there uh, from uh, PCBs to, to, to software. And uh, also you can join uh, our matrix uh, channels for more information. So that's all for me. Thank you a lot. So are there any questions? So the question is uh, if uh, someone can, uh, can uh, make it uh, out of the box and uh, use it for its own. So yes, you can do that. It's everything there. Uh, but of course, you have to respect uh, the, the, frequency, um, the, f the frequency that we'll use. Okay. So for this particular uh, beacon, it's uh, at the frequency that uh, I... I told you before, it's uh, four, uh, 401 uh, to yeah, so 402. The thing is that this uh, uh, methodological uh, frequency basically, so you chose it for your project, I mean, for you single one. Not, ex not really, because we would like to, to stay at uh, UHF, okay? Uh, because uh, it is a compromise between uh, do the Doppler, um, Doppler shift and... Um, uh, and path loss. Okay, so w ideally we would like to have uh, to, 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 to use higher frequencies because uh, the Doppler uh, there is uh, larger. So um, your quantization there and the Doppler estimation is less. Okay, uh, but then you have uh, the path loss is larger. So it's a chicken egg problem, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Have you put any thoughts about the um, coordination for the spacecraft that you could handle? The spa sorry? Google the, the coordination for the spacecraft that you could handle. Mm, yes. Uh, the, the question is uh, who is doing uh, the, um, uh, the spacecraft ID coordination. That's a very good question. Um, actually, there is, um, uh, there is an idea to, to, to use the UUIDs and a portion of it, uh, take the 76 uh, bits of it and uh, place it at, uh, as satellite identifier. Um, but uh, for now we focus mainly on, um, on the 
modulation and post-processing uh, stuff. And I think that if uh, we see that, uh, hey, this is a valuable way to get uh, accurate uh, orbits and, uh, and ra rapidly, then some w we can, uh, we can uh, think about uh, an authority or a registration form that you get uh, an ID so in, order, in order to be sure that it's uh, unique. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the question is uh, if uh, the um, STM32 microcontrollers is the only choice or, or we can uh, move to other, other uh, choices that are also radiation hardened. Um, so we, th there was no um, a big reason to, to, to use the STM32, um, only for convenience, let's say, because we, we are familiar with them. Uh, or we can easily find uh, RTOS that are um, already support them. Uh, but as I said, this is a um, this is a demonstrator. The, the demonstrators, the demonstrator, sorry. Uh, we want to um, uh, let's say focus on the modulation and RF part to see, to show that uh, this is feasible and uh, it can scale also. Uh, and um, not on the hardware itself. So our focus mainly on the protocol specification rather than the, uh, the actual hardware. So the, the protocol will be, is open source. So uh, if someone wants to implement a beacon uh, with rad hard uh, uh, components, he is free to do that. Well, there are no more questions. Thank you again. Thank you.